Hi and welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. I write for AnySportAnyTime.ca and with me as always is Jim Kerr who uh, actually also writes for AnySportAnyTime.ca. Welcome to the fold, Jim. Uh, but also writes for Kersey's Notebook.blogspot.com. Um, we're actually both in Edmonton this time but uh, we're lazy so we're going to do it over Skype this, uh, this for your viewing enjoyment. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more amusing this way. So uh, I'm actually in a war zone right now but I'm taking <laughs> I'm out of my busy schedule to, uh, that's right. you know, do something on the lighter side of life. Well, that's good for you. You know, you're kind of uh, a hero like that. Yeah, um, I'm doing it for free to volunteer. Yeah, that's, that's right. So we're going to open up uh, this week's 15 Minutes of Fame with the Edmonton Oilers, who had a pretty good week. Uh, they've actually had a pretty good couple of weeks, uh, Jim. So last week, uh, um, you know, I guess this, this past week they won a, a few games, but what I, we really want to talk about, what I'm sure everybody else wants to talk about, is that uh, in the shootout against the Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, Linus Omark, uh, he did a spinorama coming in to win the game. Uh, what did you think about that? Did you think he was that was too much or too little? Go ahead. I love that everyone's all of a sudden super sensitive about stuff that happens in the course of a game. Yeah, it's the shootout, but... You know, people have said, well, it's kind of a gimmicky thing to start with, so how are you going to get mad about that? Yeah. And it's, it, you know, it's it's something that he tried in the AHL just last week where he, he didn't end up scoring. And uh, he says that's, that's the game he plays. Everybody knows, everybody that's heard of YouTube uh, knows that Linus Omark is a flashy guy who's kind of made a name for himself by doing the, you know, the kind of cool little dangles and it, he's he most people know him from YouTube which is you know kind of an interesting point but if if you were surprised to see that from him you're delusional and if you're all of a sudden upset about people you know getting fancy on the ice that kind of stuff happens you know tens twenties uh, times during a game and if you're if you're gonna you know cry about it afterwards you're kidding yourself no I agree completely I mean uh, one of the commentators I heard was saying, you know, it's a it's a gimmicky way to start off something that is clearly a gimmick. So, you know, what's what's the big deal? I see a little bit where the other people are, are coming from. I'm a little bit of a traditionalist, and I I mean I see where what they're talking about that it's not exactly very respectful. But on the other hand, who gives a crap? Like, show the kids their the the entertainment, but, you know. But what's what's disrespectful about it? Yeah, I, just the fact that. Well, is it? I guess is it that nobody's ever done it before? Is it the spinorama that um, shows he's better than everybody else as a rookie in your first game? How does that show that he? But I mean, literally, all he's doing is picking up the puck and doing a spin. That doesn't say anything about anything. It's yeah. just, it's just exactly what it is. There's nothing. And Dan Ellis after the game. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to talk about Linus Solmark. Get a life, man. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah oh, we're, we're talking about a guy who did something to throw you off, and then it worked. And it worked. Any, anything you do in, in, you know, along that vein of, of, uh, of you know, dangles and you know, misdirection, it's all to throw off the goaltender. Are, are they going to get mad that someone deflects a shot? Yeah. Well, it was coming right at me, and then this guy stuck his stick it's out. totally disrespectful. That's disrespectful. <laughs> yeah. How could he change, change the flight of the puck like that? Yeah. It's a joke. And, you know, it, the fact that it might have thrown him off is hilarious because it happened at center ice <laughs> yeah. and he took a shot from the slot. You know, if you're fooled by a fake slap shot and then, you know, slides it between your legs, like, maybe you should be mad at yourself. No, I, I, just, I, I couldn't believe how this thing blew up afterwards. Everyone was so angry. Yeah. What are you doing? Are you, are you kidding? But, you know, it's I can see where they're coming from. It's bad for the NHL to have young players come in and, and be creative and, and play their own game. Yeah, Everyone maybe should maybe just come in, cross the blue line, and take a slap shot. That's what I think. But I'm a traditionalist. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just who I am. You know, I've always hated guys like Bobby Orr and <laughs> Savard guy. And yeah. uh, What's that other one? He played for Edmonton for a while. Uh, eight skigs. Yeah, Grinch something. Something. Think, yeah. yeah, we don't like guys like that. Easy, buddy. <laughs> Show some respect. No, I don't agree. chase. Straight shots on goal. That's right. don't Good hockey, man. Good hockey. <laughs> Dump and chase. Hit the hit the guy. Grab the puck. Put it in. I uh, like it. That's 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 the way to yeah, go. Zero zero tie where each team skates up the ice, dumps it, chases it, 
and repeat. Yeah, that's right. Maybe a cycle. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on. Cavus Reed, uh, Cavus Reed, excuse me, was hired by the uh, Edmonton Eskimos this week uh, as uh, their 19th head coach. Uh, It's their third since 2008, Jim, and uh, they've had three rookie coaches in a row. Um, So what do you think of uh, Cavus Reed of the hiring there? Well, I, I just assume, I put my trust in uh, the Eskimos organization and GM Eric Tillman that they've done their homework and uh, that they did pick uh, the, the best available guy. There was rumors of him becoming the head coach from the start. Yeah. Uh, he knows the organization. The Eskimos like to kind of present themselves as a family. I know a lot of teams do, but the, but the Eskimos to uh, maybe a greater degree than some of the clubs as, uh, as kind of a, just a, a big family. So bringing in someone that has played here and and uh, in the past is is a good step and uh, Tillman knows him um, he's been an assistant coach with a, a handful of other teams so making the step to head coach shouldn't be anything crazy no, but no. from from what I've heard and from what I understand of Cavis Reed he sounds like a good candidate he's you know he's he's saying the right things in in, in terms of what I think uh, when he's when he says that the the term rebuild yeah. Is it something he's interested in? And uh, the Grey Cup is the goal, no that's matter right. what. Yeah. And that's, you know, after what was a tough season, and really what's been a couple of tough seasons, I think that's what you like to hear from a, from a guy coming in. Because if, you know, obviously the goal is the Grey Cup, no, you know, no matter what, no matter what your situation. And it was the, the goal last season, but they obviously didn't get there and, Thanks to a bit of a late push, they came close to making the playoffs. But you know, the, the fact that that Cavus Reed is already talking about, you know, the fact that that's where we want to be. That you know, I like that, and I think uh, I think the players will be receptive to that. Yeah, I think this is just one more move in the Eric Tillman revolution of the Edmonton Eskimos. Uh, I don't think we're going to know much about it until we start seeing him seeing him go. You're right, he's saying all the right things. He's an ex-Eskimo uh, from 95 to 2000. I mean, we like that. Uh, you're right about the family thing. Uh, you know, it's good to see, but until we see what he does on the field, uh, I just I reserve judgment for right now because we've said the same thing about the past other ones. You back. Know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. I want to... Bring Gizmo back as an assistant. <laughs> Why not? Sidelines. At the very Love least, a sideline commentator. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah, that's right. All right, we're going to move on to uh, a feature we like to bring in that we just brought in called the Gabby's, the Good and Bad by You. So what we'd like for you to do is to write into us at one of our many different uh, ways that you can get to us and uh, bring up what we like to do is bring up at least three uh, good stories from the world of sport and three bad stories from the bad or at least funny stories from the world of sport. So uh, write to us and we'll try to get your submissions on air. Uh, this week, uh, our reigning Gabby winner, Jim, is Sidney Crosby. Um, I mean, the way that this guy's playing right now in the NHL is just sick. Uh, three goals, four points in two games this week. And, uh, you know, he's looking at 18 games in a row, I think, with uh, with points. So... Uh, and the Pens are winning, won, have won 11 straight uh, in that time. So, I think it's 12 now. 12 now, yeah. There we go. So the guy's unbelievable. Uh, so yeah. So let's say he's got. So he's got 18 games right now. Do you think he's got any chance of getting to the 51 game uh, point scoring streak that some other uh, hockey player we've heard of before has gotten up there, or what? Well, I guess it's possible. I mean, he's got this far, but. That's gonna take something. <laughs> I would say so. take something special to get there. Just yeah. to think about what it takes to even, you know, get to nineteen or eighteen, nineteen games. Like that's, that's a a lot of luck, a lot of, and maybe you know, maybe not as much luck when you're talking about a guy like Sidney Crosby. If I got points in that many games, it'd be, well, it'd be a luck. A freaking miracle. Like, is what uh, be. Yeah, yeah. If I got points in one straight games, yeah. that'd be some, that'd be something special. <laughs> that's right. But uh, you know, he is just playing. Like a like a man possessed right now. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. Yeah. and he he's single handedly taking that team to uh, to where they are. And, and I don't like the Pittsburgh Penguins, but the you know there's there's no question that Sidney Crosby is just uh, in a different class right now. But thank thankfully Stephen Stamkos might still give him a run for his money. He went through a bit of a slump there, but he seems back. to be uh, back on track. A couple of multi point games, and he's he's right back in the running. Absolutely. 
Uh, this week, uh, or this weekend, I guess, George St. Pierre fought Josh Koscheck in uh, the UFC 124 match. Um, he won handily. It was a uh, unanimous decision, decision after five rounds. So uh, uh, George St. Pierre's uh, goal was to, to either submit him or knock him out within the five rounds. But, you know, they went to a decision, and it was a unanimous decision. Um, is Yeah. <laughs> Just Jack, work on Koscheck. Yeah, that's exactly what Koscheck looked like. Uh, you know, it's just it was a complete beating. A little more bloody. Oh, exactly. Is uh, George St. Pierre the best Canadian athlete in the world right now? Well, there's there's no question that George St. Pierre is the most dominant man in his sport. Yeah. And yeah. I guess you could say Sidney Crosby's up there too. Yeah. But yeah. George St. Pierre is an amazing athlete. He's an amazing strategist. And uh, I was very, very happy to see him come out on top on Saturday night because I'm a, I'm not a huge UFC fan, but when GSP is fighting, I'm always very, very interested. And uh, Koscheck said after the fight, you know, sorry for all the trash talk, the Frenchie this, Frenchie that. I was just trying to hype up the fight. Well, and I saw a piece he when I think uh, I think he was winking while he said it though, or maybe it was that his eye was punched <laughs> closed. Yeah, he couldn't help but wink. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, that's what he said, and I read one thing that said like, um, okay, he was trying to hype the fight or whatever. But even when they came out uh, right at the beginning, there was no handshake. You know, yeah. uh, refused to shake his hand. So the hype was over by that point. You didn't need any more hype. Yeah. You know, like why not? And shake the, the guy thing is, he, he was trying to play the bad guy, but. What I love about Saint Pierre is that he's the like he's just he's a, a very very classy yeah. classy exactly. champion like and an athlete in general. But that's that's the kind of guy who he'd be the the captain of your hockey team. No, totally, absolutely. You know, he's, he won't trash talk. Although he was he was getting about as mad as I've seen him in the in the days leading up to the fight. Oh, the, the, right. the couple of days before the fight, he was saying, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna. I'm going to end him tonight, yeah, and, yeah. and then I won't talk about him for a while, and I'll be happy. <laughs> uh, after less than an amazing start to the season, the Miami Heat are now uh, have won eight in a row. Uh, what do you think about that? Would you say they're heating up, Jeff? Oh, I would, but begrudgingly. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see them finally start to win, and we all knew it was going to come at some point. Exactly. But eight in a row, that's good. You know, yeah. we can stop talking about how... The, uh, the the superpowers coming together aren't working. Yeah. But on the uh, maybe, maybe this will set up the because they have a big game coming up. I believe it's the L.A. Lakers and the Miami Heat on Christmas. Yeah. So if they were like if they had lost four or five or something, it wouldn't be as fun. Yeah. No, that's right. On the bad side of things, quickly here, Jim, uh, 40-year-old uh, FC 20 goalie uh, Sander Boschker whiffs on a pass, back pass in a Champions League game against Tottenham on Tuesday for the own goal. Like, really, should he be passing back to the goaltender unless the goaltender is absolutely <laughs> sure it's going to get it? You know, there's nothing funnier yeah, than the <laughs> own goal. A goal. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I think that's every goalie's nightmare. Uh, Spartak Moscow beat MSK Zelenia 2-1 in Slovakia on Wednesday, but the game was delayed because the fans were throwing flares out of the field. Uh, the players had to stand in front of the fans and plead with them to behave. Hey, why did they throw the flares on the field, Jim? Because they're crazy. they're crazy. Crazy options. <laughs> uh, when they're not brawling in KHL games, they're throwing flares. Exactly. Alexei Kovalev, Montreal, uh, Alexei Kovalev, fourth liner. Uh, he says he's the scapegoat uh, in that area. Must not be a contract year for Kovalev, eh, Jim? Amazingly, it is. It is a contract <laughs> year. <laughs> and he says this kind of thing happens to him everywhere he plays. Hmm. It's because he's it's lazy not everywhere he plays. Yeah, he's not the media scapegoat wherever he plays. Come on now, you know. <laughs> Listen, that's our 15 minutes of fame up for this week. Tune in next time when we get a whole new 15 minutes of fame. In the meantime, check us out on our Twitter at 15minutesyeg, uh, on Gmail at 15minutesyeg at gmail.com, or check us out on our YouTube channel at 15 minutes. Uh, Y-E-G. Check out Jim at and Jeff on AnySportingTime.ca and uh, check out Jim at his blog at uh, Kersey's Notebook.blogspot.com. Thanks again. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jeff.